So, um, IPQOS. Um, QoS has been thrown out. It started getting thrown out a lot four or five years ago. You always had to buy your T1s with QoS because otherwise you're going to have poor phone quality on your SIP trunks. At the end of the day, that's just marketing lingo as far as I'm concerned. I wish I, wish I could have QoS. You can get QoS if you're real careful. Real careful means that you get your SIP trunk from the same you get your SIP trunk from the same ISP that he gets his trunking from. So like, if you have somebody like Vintalk and they're tied to Quest, and you get your SIP trunk from Quest, there's a reasonably good possibility that you can get end-to-end -end QoS. But that's not the only situation where you can get, you know, a reasonably good chance of getting end-to-end -end QoS. There's this new stuff called Death, Death Serve. I don't know much about it, but I don't know if you guys know about it, but from people I talk to, it just doesn't work. You, you know, at the end of the day, when you go outside in the IP network, you're just at the mercy of the wild, wild west. Um, and you, know, you can definitely create excellent QoS inside your organizations with just simple old VLAN, and it's really easy to implement. And that's, and that allows you to be able to route inside your organization video cameras, telephones, and heavy apps over maybe what is not a big enough hose, but you know your phones are going to work, and your video probably will work, and they'll just lose some frames, and your heavy lifting applications may seem a little sluggish, but everything would work. Once you leave the security of your own land, where you can actually control the toss bits on your computer, your toss bits on your phone, and your toss bits on your PBX. So all of these are behaving, and you set up VLANs in your switches, so they, they respect the toss bits. Everything's wonderful. Outside, the problem is, you, come, you go outside, you go to Quest, you go flying across the, the cable, all of a sudden you're on electric light, light wave, and electric wife says, oh, we don't care about Quest. We, we ignore all of his toss bits. And you're, you're on our network, and you're only going to get bandwidth. You know, we have a 20 megabit fiber coming to our building. I will speed test it to several different locations. And we get 10 to 12 megabits per second. If I test it to our NOC, we always get 20 megabits per second right on the nose. But to get from our knock to where to the, through the other knock for where like speedtest.com is, we have lost our priority. We're out there with the over, rest of the overstriped world, and all of a sudden you don't have the bandwidth you, you you think you have. Where I'm going with this is that there are you know lots of people like to go with implementations where you have a 3,000 server in the headquarters. You have a small satellite office, so you put five or six remote phones in there with a DSL modem. Probably will work. Probably has a high probability of working if you have um, if you have G729 on it. It'll work really, really well if instead you put a small PBX, like a 1000 system in there, because IAX has extended uh, JIR and buffer controls and you tie a machine-to-machine -machine link between the two. So now the remote office has a PBX. It's just a satellite off the PBX as your home office, but those remote phones aren't out grabbing voicemail and things like that over the wild, wild west. We're just taking phone calls because the voicemail is local on their system, and only the traffic is across the switch. And you you bridge the two systems together using the I, IAX protocol, which is designed to do interconnections of PBXs through the wild, wild west. Going on the SIP truck side, you know, it's a mixed bag. I got many call centers that use just SIP trucks. I've got in the same building, I've got people that won't use anything but uh, PRI lines 
because they believe SIP is too unreliable and it gives you it makes a call get a little bit broken up. I believe that if you keep a traditional SIP trunk for every T1 type bandwidth you have or fiber in multiples of T1 segment, if you keep T1s without G729 around 20 to 22 calls and with G729 around 40 calls, they will typically hold up pretty well. But I've also had it where Broadsoft, who was giving me some trunks, had had uh, I think it was Phoenix actually. Phoenix and it went down. They rerouted everybody through New York. So trunk went right 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 right, no, right down the toilet. Yeah, okay, we're talking about com partners. Um, com partners. I'm sorry. Thanks, Bill. Com partners. And so they switched centers on you behind your back, and your traffic went right to nothing, and your phones were breaking up. So you know, there's there's this huge trade-off between SIP trunks and T and T1 PRIs coming in, because T1 PRIs are just rock solid all the time. So, um, but if you're getting SIP trunking, you've got this QS problem. You can go buy a QS trunk from from Quest, and they'll tell you it's QoS. But they'll only guarantee it to their knock. They will not guarantee it to your SIP trunk provider unless you use them for your SIP trunk providing. So, um, as far as testing tools and things like that, um, I like speed, speedtest.net. Um, I also really like pingtest.net because it has jitter uh, confirmations for your remote telephones at remote sites. Um, yeah, Broadsoft makes a really cool toy for testing end to end. Uh, most of you guys are, are big companies, so you, you won't need this. This comes in really handy for reps when you're trying to find out if a site is solid or not. Uh, 